Uh, I am a computer scientist and I am developing an application to, that should play roles in our social and professional life. So, I am uh, deeply involved uh, with uh, documents. Uh, but the main issues that I try to uh, be able to capture is uh, how such a life uh, generates uh, changes. Why? Because somehow that is the most uh, important thing when you develop a tool, a system, because otherwise the system will become something that is freezing the social uh, aggregate where it is applied. So how can we develop something that is reflecting and embodying changes? And uh, what we are discovering is that uh, uh, this is strongly related with documents. Because somehow changes uh, uh, start always like uh, new interpretations. And uh, thanks to God, uh, documents are open to different interpretations whatever they are. Why documents played uh, on the opposite a uh, so relevant role uh, in establishing social life is because uh, the embodiment of documents that we have known was strongly helping to make documents unique, recognizable, somehow certify something. So both the strong and weak documents have this idea that they are something that is there and is a trace that has some unique properties. Quite distinguished from the conversation that we every day continuously open and leave. But if you look to the newspapers today, you discover something quite strange. Yesterday and the day before, Italian newspapers were full of conversations that were established, and so they were somehow given for the open to the interpretation of people. And today we discover, in a short uh, paper dedicated to UK, that uh, something that was uh, documented, that Blair was uh, the participated to the baptism of, of two sons of Murdoch, was kept secret to public opinion. So, to what was the document was unknown and what were private conversations are public, made public. So that is changing the way, but also you must consider that today public conversations are used to interpret documents and not the reverse. So documents are no more the way through which we interpret such a life. But one of the reasons for this fact is that documents have changed embodiments. And since they have changed embodiments, they are changing the way in which they play in such a life. So what, from my viewpoint, must be taken into consideration is that the ontology of documents is really the ontology of the embodiment of documents. Because when you change the embodiment, the ontology changes automatically. And so we should have a more pragmatical approach to the ontology. The ontology is somehow changing together with the action and interaction that we do. I give you two examples. One is kept from one of the books of uh, Professor Ferraris, that is uh, that we ne almost never had the occasion of saying, where are you, before the cellular phone. And uh, the second one is instead a uh, uh, different uh, type of example, but is uh, also connected uh, with the idea that uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it was almost impossible to listen in an office someone claiming, who is printing from 25 minutes? Because printing was a service, not an action. With uh, personal computers, printers, and so on, there are printers uh, 
dedicated to 20 people, if someone is printing for 30 minutes, the other can print, and people can say, who is printing? So that was not possible before. It didn't have, have any meaning. And so that gives you the idea that uh, worlds are shaping the world, are not only reflecting. They are also changing, but they can, are able to change the world through the embodiment to which they make reference. And so from my viewpoint, the role of technology is not just for making a, creating efficiency. Also. They are changing the uh, space of possibility where we are acting. And since uh, both rules uh, and uh, strong and weak documents are made for giving social, uh, uh, helping the social life in the social space of interaction, if it changes the space of interaction, we have to change the way in which we define uh, weak and strong documents. Uh, I can say immediately that no, we can't live uh, with the same idea of documents. With respect to physical documents, because physical documents don't exist. And the problem is not only that we are not able to use, to use them in regulatory terms as before, but that the potential for digitalization is creating possibilities that we must be able to exploit. Otherwise, we lose. Also, because with respect to the archives, we have a, a typical situation of human life that we have complained for having access to, to less information. And we are immediately passed to the fact that we are complaining because we are having access to too much information. Surely there was one instant in our life in which we had access to the exact <laughs> amount of information where we didn't know when it happened. So we can't uh, be happy for it. One second. No, yes, but we don't know. We discover <laughs> that we have passed it. It's okay. like when, uh, uh, in a masculine joke, we can say that uh, someone tells you, did you see her? No, <laughs> you didn't see her. So, that is. But see, in order to do it, we need to uh, understand better the way in which we live our life. That will have also an impact uh, on our idea of institutions, on our idea of such a life. I think that we are really posing a quite serious question to philosophy. We are willing to understand what makes such a life effective. In my sector, we, have, uh, we are following uh, new perspective that is going to be also a new perspective in computing that is called situatedness. The main problem is the context. Every interpretation is situated in a context. But that is quite relevant if we take into consideration that every human being is living in many different contexts. And so the problem is that uh, when we read something, if we don't have access to the context that, that allows us to interpret it, then we can't uh, react to it. And that is also important uh, for people uh, who are in, uh, in uh, legislation and so on, because somehow that is, context is not something that has been invented by computer scientists, but it's something that has always been there. But the problem is that today is the number of interactions that we have makes context quite serious. I give you an example and then I close. Rainer Maria Rilke wrote uh, in one of the first years uh, of the uh, 20th century a letter to Klosowski, that was a young friend of Rainer Maria Rilke. And I was surprised because the letter started. Oh, today is the day dedicated to your letter. Yesterday, I made all my uh, letters of the last year, or the last three months. So he was a very multi-international person with a huge amount of friends with whom we had three interactions every year as a main pattern. 
I have sometimes 25 interactions with one person in one day. The problem is that I don't have the time like he had. Oh, now I sing to my young friend, uh, and so I let him uh, re-emerge in my memory, so with all the capabilities of the human brains and the neurons. No, is I must be immediately there also because people that are having with you 25 interaction are telling you and, and so and so and so. And if you are not able to react, then you are more stressed than you are losing the capability to react because you are becoming nervous. And so you are reacting in the wrong way. And so that is relevant at the micro level of my uh, way in which I react moment by moment, but also at the higher level, am I reacting in a meaningful way within an important uh, interaction that I have with other people? Did I read carefully all the documents? Or do I remember what I read carefully, what was written in those documents? Because that is what is requested to us. We are continuous. And so the problem is that accumulating knowledge is truly relevant. If I need to know when it was written one symphony of Beethoven, Wikipedia is immediately accessible. But I must tell you, I am a professor and so on, but I need this type of information once or two, two occasions in a week. For all the rest, I need to know what to do next. And with respect to it, documents and so recording, the interaction between communication and recording, the interaction between locality and uh, non-locality is absolutely dramatically relevant. So the problem is not reflecting the old documents, is reinventing the social life and the use of inscriptions more than of documents. In, w in ways in which we can regulate and be active. Regulate and be active. I, uh, when you were posing the question, I, say, I said that is uh, the question, the right question for a matter. Because the big problem is that notaries will no more work with documents. We'll work uh, with uh, an embryo. And the problem is that with respect to some type of information, what notaries will uh, do is not, uh, I grant you that this document is conform and is true, but is, uh, I grant you that that company will not destroy its memory. That there are a recording, a recording of their activity, and so I will do the control of the formal uh, behavior of the company, but I have also the responsibility of keeping the trace. So you will become some uh, very much uh, digitalized, digital information oriented. Surely it will be a very quite interesting because I remember that all notaries were always writing by hand and so it was fascinating. So you are jumping into the... But my question is not about notaries, it's about no, but that is, Will there be such a no, thing? That tells you that uh, we are going uh, to have uh, a vast uh, different uh, number of situations. You can have uh, places where you interact uh, without saying who you are, like before, so, or where you can invent uh, your personality and so on. Places where you can interact only if you are recognized, so if you are taking responsibility of who you are and how you are participating, and places in which what you do and the information that you created will be granted by other people. Because somehow that will make uh, all the formal uh, negotiation crossing uh, communities uh, more uh, certain. So you know that whenever there are problems uh, connected with scandals, there are these nights in which some pure employees of some companies spend all the night destroying documents. If they are at the notary, that will not happen. They can also destroy what they have at home, but the but notary has evidence. And so you will have, and that is not something that should be given to the public, because the public cannot take responsibility of all the documents in the world. And so I think that there will be new roles. 
that are connected with new ways of organizing social life. But surely there is a, what we are posing as a question. We must invent a sort of new etiquette for managing the memory. It must be an etiquette. <laughs> but that will be relevant for how we communicate. For example, for me it's completely crazy that uh, when you need uh, the formal signature of a document, the procedure is more complicated than if you use a normal. It should be formal, not formal. It should be at the same easiness. Because it doesn't make sense that there is a sort of complication. But that will be something that we learn uh, with the practice. If we don't connect the digital identity with the physical identity, we are losing the, the point. What is the point? Because somehow it's clear that the, also that the, at the pure digital level we can multiply the identities very much more than with respect to the physical, because it's not easy to multiply the bodies. While multiplying identities, you know that when Sherry Turkle did uh, her famous research uh, in uh, life uh, in the mirror, uh, she was uh, playing uh, the life uh, in the digital world, having uh, by herself 12 different personalities. She was meeting people with 25, 30 different personalities. That was a game, but that is not something re relevant from the point of view of the identity. With the HBZ identity, we have this problem of uh, augmenting the identity. Because, like uh, Ferraris was uh, observing now, when we interact with the other, we can ask, uh, where are you? That is a problem of identity. Once, if we are posing a question, uh, where is the other person? Was, was. So, who is that person? Where is she? And so on. Is a new question that uh, we can have. The second point is connected with what I was saying before. That is not the identity from the point of view of a regulatory institution granting to the other people that you are not acting in a not legal way. It's the problem who I am. Why? Because somehow such a life is multiplying our potential identities, and we are always we are facing always more difficulties in putting order, in finding again an identity, because somehow we are continuously stressed to do something that is not exactly good for all the, our social relations. And so we are no more having a coherent behavior, and so that will stress our identity. And with respect to it the extensions that we may have in terms of memory and so on. Different uh, is instead the problem of the identity of uh, uh, what are called legal entities, not physical entities, because with respect to legal entities, you must reinvent the way in which you grant the identity, but you must reinvent that, taking into account of all what you can. And from this viewpoint, I again think that uh, the role that was played by notaries will be played by who grants the persistence of memory.